Well, good evening, church. We're glad that you're here this evening. Let me get this thing turned on. You don't have any trouble hearing me on Facebook because I got the speaker right here on the phone, but this will make it a little bit better for the congregation. And and uh, we're glad to have the Facebook audience, and we're glad to have you that are in church. We had a wonderful time finishing out the fifth chapter of Galatians this morning. We started with verse 19, and uh, we talked about the flesh and the spirit, and we read what the flesh was, all these wicked, terrible things about the flesh. I texted it out today also. And then the spiritual life, and that we as Christians uh, that are saved should be walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. Now we're starting uh, the sixth uh, chapter of Galatians. Church, what page is it on in our pew Bibles? 1256 in the Pew Bibles, and some of you have your own Bible, and of course, wherever you find it in there. Uh, we're just going to uh, start taking it verse at a time as we continue on from chapter 5 from this morning. And chapter 6, uh, it starts out, uh, let's have a word of prayer first. Lord, bless the message tonight. Uh, Galatians is a wonderful book. It uh, specifically deals with Judaizers those that were telling people that they had to keep the works of the law and they had to do, do those things and work their way to heaven. And, of course, uh, we know that's not true. Uh, it's of faith. So bless now this evening. Save that soul nearest hell. Reclaim a backslider. Give Christians higher ground. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 6. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault ye which are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself lest thou also be tempted now that's a that's quite a verse there you know many times uh many christians when when someone's uh, when it says your brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault that means if they fall into sin as a as a Christian, um, it says, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest I also be tempted. Now, you see, the, the, the truth of the matter is, uh, everybody sins. And if you're, if you're the kind of Christian out there in the Facebook audience or, or here in church, uh, that every time someone gets down, they uh, they backslide and get into sin, and, and instead of kicking them and and berating them and uh, talking about them all up and down the street, you might want to help them. Uh, you might want not don't don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about if they go out drinking, go out drinking with them. That's not what I'm talking about at all. But it says, if to be overtaken in a fault, a sin. He which are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. See the 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 goal of the church and the, the goal of the pastor and the goal of Christians is to bring people back into fellowship, not to uh, be rough on them and and criticize them and hate them and all of that. Our 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 truth with that individual is that we should. Uh, Try to bring them back to fellowship. See that the key to Christianity is fellowship. We have fellowship with the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit, and then with one another. Now, what what breaks fellowship is sin. And when someone, uh, as they said in, uh, we just finished Second uh, Corinthians, First Second Corinthians, a Corinthian church was a rough church and a lot of sin. In fact, they had a sin that was so bad in that church, there was a fella uh, that was having an affair with his mother-in-law, and it was known in the church, and they weren't doing anything about it. And Paul had to write him a letter in First Corinthians and tell him that there was worse things going on in their church than the heathens done. Heathens didn't even live like that. Unsaved people don't even live like that. And so they were admonished, the church was admonished, 
to break fellowship with that in, individual. Now, not that they were going to be mad at them or uh, all of that, but they had to separate from them so that they could, in the spirit of meekness, they could bring them back and restore them to fellowship, which they did. And in 2 Corinthians, he came back to the church and he repented of his sin and he was reunited with the church. So we, we, we've got to remember that the goal of a Christian, it's our goal is to always try to restore people, try to get them to come back. Uh, some people hate drunkards so much they have no ministry with drunkards. I work with drunkards every day. Uh, that's, that's been my ministry for 40 years. Some of them, oh, they try so hard and they mean well and, and they do well for a week or two, some of them even a month or two or a year, and then they get back to that nasty drink. And thank God, I've been saved 58 years and, and several months, and and uh, I, uh, I I've never had a bottle of beer. I've never had any whiskey. I've never had any. I haven't had any kind of alcoholic beverage since I've been saved, April 4th, 1969. But some Christians have, and and my goal is to is to restore them. And I don't know what happens. Sometimes they seem to do good. They do good for a day or a week. I just I got what well, I hope he's all right. I don't know, but. Uh, he had had his uh, one week anniversary of no drinking on Saturday and uh, and that was great he was here on church on on, on Sunday and I saw him on Monday but not on Tuesday or not on Wednesday and I hope he's not out drunk I don't know hasn't called me haven't heard anything from him I hope he's okay I love them. I care for them. I, I don't want to think the worst, but it's a possibility that he went out drinking. I don't know. Usually, someone will try to get a hold of you, or contact you, or something, and and uh, they just go. Uh, but what do I want to do? I want to restore him back to fellowship, as I do anyone that that goes out, and whether it's drinking or or whatever whatever fault it, but whatever sin uh, it may be. Uh, one of you restored to fellowship. So, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye that are spiritual. So remember, spiritual Christians don't condemn and hate people that backslide. That's some of them think that that's very spiritual. It's not spiritual at all to to, to condemn backsliders and and uh, rail on them and gossip about him and all that that's not a spiritual person at all that's a very carnal Christian and uh, you're not much better than they are with your bad stinking attitude verse 2 it says bear one another's burdens and so, so fulfill the law of Christ you see we should be burden bearers we should be caring for others when, when someone uh, has a difficult time in their life with uh, uh, health issues or their loved ones have health issues or they have uh, money issues or or what it burdens you y'all you know what a burden is you, you know what burdens are how, how many of you have some burdens right now in your life I have burdens in my life we all if you think about it, we've got burdens in our life but you know I love that song burdens are lifted at Calvary Calvary, Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. So, dear one, it says here uh, that uh, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So, the law of Christ is to bear one of the burdens. The law of Christ. Uh, that if someone's overtaken in a, a fault, we that are spiritual restore one. And see, the, the ministry, Christian ministry, ought to be bringing people to Christ and bringing back the backslidden uh, from sin. But maybe they're not in sin. Maybe they just got a hard time right now. Maybe they've got financial woes. Help them if you can. Help them if you can. It says that bear one another's burdens. Oh, how important. Bear ye one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. Verse 3. If 
For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. What, 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 what do you think it is if, if we think we're somebody or something? Um, you know what? You know all that is? It's just uh, pride. It's pride and arrogance. I wish uh, the... Uh, I, <laughs> I kind of feel sorry for him, really. I guess I, you say, well, why do you feel sorry for him? I kind of I feel sorry for the President of the United States. And let me tell you why I feel sorry for him. He said, why do you feel sorry for him? He's, he's a billionaire. Uh, he's the most powerful man in the world. Uh, I mean, he's, uh, he has the power to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, he has the power of clemency where he can, he can at the stroke of a pen forgive a murderer and turn him out of prison. The president has that power. Did you know that? The president has that power. Some of them have. <laughs> and some of them shame on them for doing it. <laughs> now I know sometimes there could be some kind of a case where it was mistaken identity, blah blah blah. But usually the judicial system can take care of that. But the president has so much power he can free people from prison or or, or whatever. But I feel sorry for him. And you say, well, why do you feel sorry for a billionaire president? Uh, that. Uh, I'll, t I'll tell you why I feel sorry for President Trump, because he's so proud and arrogant. He's, he's full of himself. If you ever notice when he gives a speech, he, he, speaks on a, he speaks on TV every day. And he's, he's always telling you how great he is. That's, that's not humility, and that's not godliness. And I, I feel, I just say that. Um, and let me just say this, I'm not against him. I'm not a Trump hater. I voted for him. Now, if uh, uh, I, I'd have voted for him for one reason, that he's for saving babies' lives and not killing them. He's against abortion. He's not for it. If that was only re is that the only thing that uh, I'd, I'd have voted for him just for that. I'd never vote for anyone that for killing babies. Hillary Clinton was for killing babies. And uh, and Trump wasn't. He made the best statement of any president that ever ran for president of, of against abortion. And there was there's other reasons I voted for him. I think he's got some good ideas in, in a lot of things, but I feel sorry for him because he's so proud and arrogant. And uh, you can't be saved when you're proud and arrogant. You have to uh, humble yourself to be saved. Do you understand that? arrogant, proud people can't be saved. Uh, you've got to become like a little child. You've got to humble yourself. And I hope you, I know there's a lot of TV evangelists, these big time preachers and that, and they said, oh, I led Donald Trump to Christ. Then another one, oh, I led Donald Trump to Christ. I've never heard him testify about any kind of faith in Jesus Christ. I hope he does get saved. Now, I think his vice president, Pence, I think he's a wonderful saved man. And I hope he's talking in his ear and trying to get it because he hum, uh, Pence is a humble man. Uh, pr uh, Trump is a proud, arrogant man. That's the difference between the lost and the saved. Humility, huh? Humility. And uh, I'm just saying that. But it says here, uh, if a man think himself to be something, I'm nobody. You're nobody. We need to humble ourselves. If you think you're something, some people, they. I had one guy come in the mission over there at 425, our other building over here, um, in the next block that we used to have meetings in. A fellow come in there one day, and he whispered in my ear. He says, Pastor Varga, I just want to let you know that I'm not like these other folks in here. I don't know what that's all about. guess he thought he was better than people that come into a rescue mission. I don't know. I guess that's what he thought. And uh, why did he do that? Uh, he was proud and arrogant, and he didn't want to identify with sinners. Now, you, you better want to identify with sinners. You know why? Because you are one, and I am one. All we in church tonight, we're sinners, and all you out there on Facebook, you're sinners. And so... Uh, it says, if a man think himself to be something 
when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And remember this, you see, I remember a guy, he was a rich man and he helped me a lot. I started a new church, gave me a lot of money. And um, he was part of the new church, but he, he, he'd always, and then he was serious. He said, Pastor, I want to tell you, when I, I talk about humility, preach on humility, such the like, he said, uh, it's very hard for me to be humble when I'm so great. Well, he thought he's great. He was a rich man, and he could talk well, and he he had what you, what the world would call had everything together. Had everything together. But... Uh, the Bible says that we're all nothing. Uh, all of the Bible says all of our righteousness or all of our greatness or all of what we think is great. Maybe Mr. Trump thinks he's great, and and uh, he was talking about. Anyway, I'm not going to get into what he was talking about. But he's proud and arrogant, and that that's not the way Christians are. Uh, it says, if any man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. You see, it's self-deception to be proud and arrogant and think you're somebody because we're all nobody and we're all nothing because the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know. And I'm talking about everybody's heart. You hear people say a lot of times, well, she's a good woman or he's a good man. Ain't none good. No, not one, the Bible says. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Is that guy bringing a bike up or taking a bike away? It looks like he's coming up. Okay. Just want to make sure nobody was stealing your bike. <laughs> Go tell him he can come in, Greg. Um. So it says, verse 4, But let every man or woman, mankind, but let every man prove his own work. Prove yourself. Don't tell me who you are, what you can do. One of the scariest things is when someone comes in the door here, uh, has come through my door of the church at, at any time past in my 40 years of ministry, and all of a sudden they tell me how, well, how great they are, uh, how they're, uh, they're the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know, and they're just telling me all about their self, how wonderful they are. Oh, no, no. <clears throat> don't tell me <clears throat> don't tell me about yourself friend show me who you are by what you do show me what kind of Christianity <clears throat> you have by what you do let every man prove his own work for the fellow just come in we're in Gal that's okay Galatians chapter 6 and we're on verse 4 let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. <coughs> it, says you, uh, it says you want to do right, become a nobody, humble yourselves, work for God, do things that are profitable, others will notice it, and then you can rejoice. Amen? Amen. Yeah, amen. It says for every man shall bear his own burden. So now, of course, we I, I sang a little bit of the song just before. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Yes, He is a burden bearer. But we have to bear our own burdens. We've got burdens. Don't blame anyone else for it. You know, some people, they blame all of their heartache. And all of some fellas come in here all the time and, and they're, they're saying they have to drink because it's someone else's fault. It ain't no one's fault that you drink, but, but your fault. You might have had some bad background. You might have had someone did you wrong. It might have been your mom or your daddy. I don't know. I had a wonderful mom and dad, so I don't, I could never say that, but some have had a bad uh, upbringing, and, but you can't blame it on anybody. 
you've got burdens in your life. I've got burdens. And it says we need to bear our own burdens. But let me tell you something. In the process of bearing your own burdens, you'll be over, you'll be over crushed and you'll be brought down by your burdens if you don't confess your sins and repent and get saved and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you, when you have that relationship of having a heavenly father and having God the Holy Spirit living within you, then you can walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh. And then you'll be able to bear your own burdens with the help of God. Yourself, you can't. With God's help, you can. Every man shall bear his own burden. Verse 6, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. That's what it says. Uh, uh, you ought to take care of your preacher. You ought to take care of the pastor. You ought to take care of a spiritual leader. Uh, that's, uh, that's, what, that's what it's saying. Uh, I, uh, I'm in a position. I, I don't... Uh, I'm supposed to get a salary from the church and from the mission. I don't take it. I take a little housing allowance. That's it. Uh, I don't. I don't need that because I'm a past and uh, uh, social security and pension and such the like things in my past. I'm. I'm fine. Um, but it's just saying here that if someone's a spiritual leader that's teaching you the Bible. The church has a responsibility uh, to. I, I I know some pastors. I, I I encourage pastors. I say you need to teach you. I, I know some pastors that are pastoring a church and taking care of a congregation, working two and three jobs, and can't hardly uh, make ends meet and can't hardly pay their house payment. And and they got pretty good sized churches. I say something wrong with you. I says why don't you. They need to teach their church this particular uh, verse, and uh, and other. There's much scripture that supports that. That uh, he's a, he's a, a valid pastor. I've known several that are that way, and yet they feel a responsibility that they don't want to have the church to support them, and they're going to work themselves two and three jobs and can't hardly even and have a bunch of kids and support their kids and. And go around with secondhand clothes on, and then I says that ain't necessary. The Bible says, as it says here, it's not my case. I'm not begging you for money. Uh, I don't take a salary from. I, I give to the church. I don't take from the church. It says, uh, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. You ought to pay that pastor's. House payment. I don't have a house payment. You have to pay my house payment. Don't worry about that. My house paid for. Uh, and so you see what I'm saying is this is just an indication that church members ought to take care of their pastor and take care of their preacher. Now, if he's in the position he doesn't need that, as sometimes happens, and is in my case, that's okay. Uh, that's the way it is. Um, verse 7 be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Oh, the, you know, this thing of sowing and reaping, this is, it's in the Bible, but I mean, unsaved people can't deny this, can they? What kind of, I, I saw a guy, they had ever, they were selling something on television, and I just watched it. Uh, uh, they're trying to sell popcorn, and uh, they showed a, a a farm in Iowa, and they actually showed the machine. Uh, they're selling popcorn, and they said they had inbred this uh, popcorn and everything, and and uh, they had, they got popcorn that the stuff don't get in your teeth and that. It's just mostly all, I guess it's almost like that fake popcorn you get. You know, stuff you get in the bag that's fake, it's just stuff, it's not. But this is real popcorn. It's kind of spongy. It's kind of spongy. I, I don't know. No, they just said this is popcorn. I don't know. Uh, I mean, they just said it's popcorn without a hull. Without a hull. 
and, and they said you can just eat it and it don't get in your teeth and and I don't know and uh, it was I seen the price they wanted to, I figured out what it was he's selling like 10 bags or something 20, oh, 20 bags and it was like a buck and a quarter a bag microwave popcorn but and it said it was fourth, fourth generation. They, they figured out. I'm just telling you this. I've seen it on television today uh, on an ad. Uh, and what they were... Uh, now, if, if, if four generations back, if that old farmer, and it's a farm people, farm people that produce this stuff, if they don't, uh, uh, if you don't, if you don't plant some corn seeds, you're not going, you're not going to get some popcorn that you can reap and sell, are you? I mean, you got to. Uh, it says, "Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap." Now, what if that, what what if that farmer four generations back said, "I can't stand, I can't stand popcorn. I can't stand the hulls in it. it. Gets in my teeth, and I can't hardly get it out with a toothpick." And I'm just going to quit eating popcorn. No, he didn't do that. He he went out and I, I never heard of it. You ever hear that before? Someone got hauled as popcorn? They they say they got it. I don't know. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna buy twenty bags to find out. <laughs> Try to find out if someone else gets it or or uh, whatever. Uh, uh, but anyway, you'll never get away from that. For he that uh, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, it'll be in all kinds of things. Uh, it'll be in your life. It'll be in your Christian life. If you sow to the wind, you reap the whirlwind. If you sow good things, if, if, if you're a good Christian and, and you're faithful and, and loving and, and kind and and you do all things. I see some. There's more people joining on Facebook. We're in Galatians, chapter six, and and we're on. We've started verse one. We're now on uh, verse seven. Uh, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can't get away from that. You might not even be saved. You might be watching today, and you're not even saved. But you reap what you sow. This pop. This guy that made this popcorn now and selling it for. This uh, microwave popcorn says don't have any hull. Uh, he had to sow that, and he had to try it and sow it and try it. Now, four generations later, he's selling it and and getting more money for it than you have than you get from uh, Walmart or Publix or whatever. And it's a premium item, but it doesn't have. And he says it's just oh, and, and, and I guess the first uh, he's got four kinds. <laughs> Maybe you're gonna go out and look it up on the internet and buy some. I don't know. But his first, uh, his first kind is called showhouse popcorn, but without the hull. Now let me tell you a story about showhouse popcorn. I don't go to I don't go to the wicked Hollywood movies. I have, I haven't gone to a Hollywood movie. Uh, let me see. Did it go to anyone I first got saved? Let me think back now. I don't think I've ever been to a Hollywood movie since I've been saved. Uh, you say, well, why not? Because they're wicked. They're wicked. A bunch of whores and whoremongers making these movies and making millions of dollars, and, and I'm supposed to support them. But before we were saved, my wife and I would go to the go to the Hollywood movie and go to the show house. There's just something good about that show house popcorn. Do, do you feel, is that the same way you felt? My wife just loves it. She, she, my, my wife, she's got to have it. She, my wife, it's one of the things she loves more than anything in the world. She might, I don't know, she might have uh, ordered some of that popcorn. I don't know, because she loves popcorn. But no, no hall popcorn. But now, all this time I've been saved, um, she said, honey, pull up there by the show house and, and uh, go in there and get me some show house popcorn. I said, I ain't going on no dirty show house. I said, we're just going in to get pop. They don't know that. One of my church members or someone knows me uh, preaching against the show house and say, don't go there. And then they see Varga going in the filthy movie house. So I ain't going in the show house. 
I said, if uh, if you, but she got to have that show house pop. She she's not so about show house popcorn. I said, we're going to have to get your grandkids to go in. You have to get your kids to go in. You have to go in yourself. But this preacher is not going in uh, uh, to the filthy movie house. You might not agree with me. We got Christians that they got the Netflix and the on and on and on, and they download the filth and watch it in their house. God help them. Uh, but that's the first one he brought out. Show house popcorn. Then, why am I telling you all about this popcorn? Because I see them. <laughs> I'm telling you about sowing and reaping, right? Fourth generation, these people. Now they're making big money off it, I think. Because they're, they're on one of them big networks that sells stuff. I mean, they don't sell a little bit. They sell thousands and thousands and thousands of, of stuff. Should I, give them a, should I give them a plug? I'll give them a plug. QVC. Yeah, QVC. Yeah, they sell that stuff. Boy, them women, they watch that QVC and they buy it and they buy it. <laughs> you don't have to go. It's bad enough you go in the store and you buy all that stuff, but they, they just, QVC, man, that's a big, that's a billion dollar industry. But anyway, and uh, you got a pretty good product to get on QVC. So fourth, fourth generation of popcorn makers, and 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 he was reaping what he was sowing, and 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 the first one he made was Showhouse popcorn. So then, I guess he had some of the tree huggers and uh, health nuts that didn't like Showhouse popcorn. Uh, so he, he he made some with less salt and less butter. That wouldn't go over for me. So then he figured out, he made the third kind. Uh, you know what that was? Overwhelming butter <laughs> with double, triple butter. And uh, now that would be the one for me. That's the coronary brand. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. You know, God's been good to me. I love butter. I love all that stuff. I love it, and I ain't a kid anymore. I'm 77 years old. You're shocked. You out on Facebook, you say, I can't believe it. You look so young. You're 77. I'm 77 years old. But you know what? And I might, I mean, I might have a heart attack and die tonight or die tomorrow, but I never had a bit of heart attack, and I love it. I had, uh, I made myself uh, yesterday, um, uh, now it wasn't all bad, uh, but I, I had, because I had grain bread, seven grain bread, and I made uh, two grilled cheese sandwiches. But man, I put, I put so much butter on that uh, seven grain bread that I mean, when you put it in the pan, I mean, the butter was just like, it was boiling, it was bubbling up so much under it, it was like he was frying a piece of chicken or something, you know? <laughs> Well, I tell you, man, that was two good cheese sandwiches. And by the way, <laughs> uh, I had three pieces of cheese in one of them and four pieces of cheese in the other one. <laughs> Wasn't real thick cheese, but I mean, it was like normal. <laughs> good cheese, though. But anyway... Uh, but God's been good to me. I haven't. It's not because I've watched myself, but I've never had any heart problem at all. Thank God. Uh, but like you said, it's coronary stuff. But I, I don't smoke and drink. I don't smoke or drink. We had it again. Okay. Here we got a new guy in church tonight, but he's a talkative one. <laughs> he's a talky. That's fine. I don't mind. This isn't a real dignified church. We're on, we're on Facebook. You're going all over the world now. We've got millions of viewers. No, not really. <laughs> you like to participate, eh? You're not too pooped to participate. Does anybody remember the remember anybody remember the fake? Anybody? When I lived in Detroit, they had a, a a soda pop company named Fago. Fago, and they had a little guy on there, and he'd say, "I'm too pooped to participate." <laughs> Then he'd drink that Fago pop and boom, he'd come alive. <laughs> It'd wire him up. Well, let's go on. 
Be not deceived, verse 7. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth that day, they also reap. It'd be a, it'd be a guy have haul this popcorn and, and uh, make a million bucks or two off it. You're going to reap what you sow. You sow to the wind, you reap the whirlwind. You sow to the Lord, you, you have good seeds, and you do things that are good, and you'll reap good things, just like the farmer, just like this guy that's making a lot of money selling hullless popcorn now. Four generations of them. They, they got a popcorn that doesn't have a hull in it. That's a good thing. I think I talked myself into it. I might even buy a batch of it. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. That's that been advertising for him. Better get some. See if it's any good. I can tell you if he's lying or not. <laughs> well, let's go on. All right. Verse 8. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. What does that mean? Drinking beer, smoking marijuana, cigarettes, uh, other drugs. You sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. Now, sad to say, prostitution, yeah, Im immorality, yeah. Yeah, you go out here and get a hooker off of Ridgewood and go in a motel and... Uh, and uh, uh, you, uh, you might catch syphilis and gonorrhea or AIDS too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what they got. And so it says here, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Ha, ah, isn't that good? Life everlasting. That's heaven. Slow to the so to the flesh, go to hell. Slow to uh, so to the spirit, repent of your sins, turn to Christ. You reap eternal life. How many of you in here got the got the born again experience? You you you're born again, Amen. Now you know here's a sad thing. I hate to say this, but but a, a, a born again Christian. Sad to say, can so to the flesh. We talked about it in Galatians 5 this morning in church this morning. When, when I read verse, uh, verses 19 uh, uh, to, uh, to 26, it says, uh, remember verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such a like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's, that's people going to hell do those things. You should, and a Christian can do those things yet, but you shouldn't. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, that means if you're born again, you've been, you, you, you're alive because you're born again, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another. And you know, this chapter 6 we're doing now, this is part of the same thing. You understand that? You know, this, this letter to the Galatians, it was just a letter. It wasn't chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That was added much later, these chapters. But this is a letter. It's a, it was a letter to the Galatians. And so as we're reading in, in chapter 6, it's certainly continuing on on this thing about uh, the battle between the flesh and the spirit that we have as Christians, every one of us. He that soweth to the, his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Continuation of chapter 5, of course. And, let it, and look at verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Listen. Don't ever get to the point, dear one. Don't ever get to the point where you want to quit doing good and, and doing godly things. Just keep it up. You see, I've witnessed to my loved ones. I've witnessed to people. I've lived for God. 
I faithfully tithe in the church. I do this and I do that. It says here, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Uh, what you do? Just keep doing good. That's what well-doing is. Keep doing good. Keep doing right. Keep doing what the Bible says. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. <clears throat> I'll tell you one thing. When you die and go to heaven, you're going to reap. And if Jesus comes back and the rapture comes, could come tonight. I wish he would come tonight. Uh, that'd be wonderful. You could reap then. If we faint not, don't faint, don't faint, don't quit. Don't quit. I know pastors that quit. They get discouraged. Does, does it ever get tough pastoring a church? You better believe it. The problems you've got, multiply them by 100. That's what I got. I've got all of your problems plus my own and so on and so forth. I, I know a lot of pastors have been called to the ministry and, and um, uh, uh, they faint and quit. You get Holy Ghost filled and you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh, and, and you won't desires of the flesh. If we faint not, don't faint. Verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Now you say, does it say here in the Bible that you ought to do, maybe do more for saved people and lost people? That's exactly what it says. That's exactly what that verse says. Look at it again. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. So it says we should do good to who? Everybody. Do good to everybody. Everybody do good, it says. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. That's safe, folks. So my, my priority in doing good is to save folks. Who should I do good to? Everybody. But my priority, and that's what this verse says. You said, uh, I don't agree with it. I don't care if you agree with it or not. It's the Bible. I just preach the Bible. That's why I just, I just preach through the Bible. I, I, I just, uh, verse chapter 5 last Yesterday, this morning, chapter 6, now I go on. There ain't no chapter 7. We go on to Ephesians. And so I, I just preach the Bible. Uh, it, one of the best capitalists I've ever had, a guy, uh, I thought he'd be church tonight. He's supposed to be church tonight. He said he'd see me tonight. Hope he's okay. Uh, he was here this morning. And uh, uh, he'd been coming to church here, and he told someone, uh, Oh, why don't you come over? Why don't you go to church with me today? And he says, where are you going? He says, oh, I'm going over there to have him hear Varga preach. Oh, no. He says, no, I ain't going over there to hear Varga preach. And, and, and the guy asks me, he says, well, why not? He says, all he does is open up the Bible and preach out of the Bible. Well, what do you think a preacher is supposed to do? That's what a preacher is supposed to do. I ain't supposed to. In fact, my wife gets after me sometimes. She says I tell too many stories. Maybe I do sometimes. I, I, I like to tell real stories that that have to do with the Scripture. Like that thing about the popcorn. I think that's interesting, you know, uh, uh, sowing and reaping. And I, I do. I don't know. That's the way I preach. And I, I put in personal stories. And I might tell you about my grandkids. I might tell you about my neighbors. I might tell you about someone at the store. I don't and I, I, I just think preaching should be the Bible, but uh, experiences we have in the in the world, and so people can kind of identify with it. You understand what I'm saying? Bring it in. That's what I do. And and uh, but anyway, I'm a Bible preacher, and that fellow might have, uh didn't know he did that, but he was. I'm, I'm, that's a compliment to me that I'm a Bible preacher. Thank God. Well. As we have opportunity, verse 10, Galatians 6, let us do good unto all men, everybody, especially unto them who are of the household of faith or saved people. Saved people. Uh, verse 11, he says, You see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. Now, some say, <clears throat> I don't know for sure, but some 
theologians, that's someone who's supposed to know a lot about the Bible, they say that uh, Paul's thorn in the flesh was he had bad eyesight. And they say that's why it says he wrote so large a letter. Uh, it wasn't one of his longest letters, so he didn't mean it was a long letter because there are other letters that were longer than this. Uh, but they say he had large writing. Sometimes people that don't see well, they write bigger, you know, so they say that. So maybe that could be, I don't know. Believe whatever you want on that, but I'm just telling you what people are supposed to know they're talking about and say about that. Verse 12, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Only least they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Now, this is getting back to the whole problem with the letter to the Galatians. There were Judaizers. Remember, this letter was written because in Galatia there were Judaizers that what they did, what these Judaizers were doing was uh, they were trying to get Christians to abide by the law, to do ceremonial law and to be circumcised and so on and so forth and follow the law and have holy days and so on. We don't have that anymore. Uh, those are all gone, especially in Colossians. You especially read that in Colossians where it tells very carefully about that there's, we have no, we, we have none of that. Uh, we have no Sabbath today, and there are some that they call Sunday the Sabbath. Sunday's not the Sabbath. We have no Sabbath now, and we even have some that they call themselves um, Messianic Christians, and, and they they follow other things too. That's legalism, and I don't know. Some say, I don't know if they're saved or they aren't. But I'm telling you what, uh, we don't have any holy days in Christianity understand every day's the lord's day i know some baptist preachers would be mad at me say you got to have a church on sunday if you say uh listen if you if you want to be a bible christian you have church every day we have church most every day here when i was in milwaukee we had more church we had four we had four services every day at the milwaukee rescue mission Four services every day, six days a week, and seven services on Sunday. So we had some church every day, and 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 I believe we have quite a bit of church here, and and uh, we have it four days a week and two times a day on two of those. And like I say, we'll we'll get back to our schedule in Milwaukee, and that'll be a lot more church because why? You're supposed to have church. What's church? It's people assembling. That's all it is. The word church means assembly. It has nothing to do with no holy place with candlesticks up in front and altars and pulpits and all that. That ain't that ain't church. You understand? And and so that's what it says. Um, make a fair so it says get out of that legalism, verse twelve. Verse thirteen. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. I mean, if you're going to keep the law, you've got to do the whole shot. You understand that? That's the only way you can get to heaven. Because if you offend, the Bible says not the portion of Scripture, it says if you offend in one point of the law, you've offended in all. So if, if, if you miss one deal, you're gone. And of course, we can't keep it all, can we? We can't keep any of it, you see. But we can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Amen. Um... For neither they themselves are circumcised, keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that ye may glory in your flesh, what you did. But God forbid, look at verse 14, what a wonderful verse. But God forbid that we should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Oh, yeah. Verse 15, it says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. I see in 1 Corinthians, it says, If any man be in Christ, that's man or woman, boy or girl. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So the new creature is the big deal. Verse 16, and as many as walk according 
to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Now I'm not sure what that means. Some say that he had holes in his hands and on and on. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I know he's a great follower of Christ and and uh, I, some even today they say they've got the marks of Jesus in their hands and that. I ain't going to get into all that stuff. Not exactly sure, but I know he's a great follower of Jesus. I want to be too. Verse 18, Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. So we close out the book of Galatians. It's done. And I'm glad you came to church tonight, and I'm glad that we've got some folks watching out there on Facebook, and and I hope it's encouraged you, and I hope these great truths that are here, that we should bear one another's burdens in verse 2, uh, and we will be humble as it tells us in verse 3, and every man prove his own self in verse 4. And every man bear their own burdens. Men are bear your own burdens with the help of God, trusting in Christ. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Yeah. Verse 7, God's not mocked. What shall a man sow with that shall he also reap? So to the flesh you reap corruption. So to the spirit you reap eternal life. Amen. What a great chapter. This is a wonderful chapter. And then closing out as we've just finished these last few verses. Let's pray, church. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, thank you. Here in the church, you say, Pastor, I'm a saved person. I'm 100% sure if I died, I'd go to go to heaven. Would you slip your hand up if you know you're saved? God bless you. God bless you. I see your hands. We put them down. Thank you. You're here in the church. You say, "I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm going to heaven, Pastor. I'm not sure. I'm saved." Would you slip your hand up? Let me see your hand. Anybody? Anybody in church? You raise your hand. Say, "I'm not sure if I'm saved." Anybody at all? How about you folks out there in the in the Facebook audience? Are you saved? I can't see your hand. Slip your hand up if you're saved. I I, I hope you are. But if you're not, you can be saved. And I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer now. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why don't you get saved today? I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer right now. And if you're not saved, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. and Repent. Receive Christ. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day the best I know how with an honest heart I turn from my sins receive you as my savior thank you for saving me right now anyone in the church pray that our heads are bowed our eyes are closed you pray that prayer today in church and get saved if you did raise your hand anybody in church god bless you god bless you thank you god bless you anybody out there on facebook i hope you did i hope you did friend i hope you trusted christ let me know about it contact me through the facebook god bless you facebook friends we're gonna we're gonna go off now and we'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night.